Hi, everybody. We hope everyone's doing well during these times. Our project for marine biology is going to be over leatherback sea turtles, and it'll be presented by Kathy Lee, Pedro Flores, Christopher Ogden, Casey Job, and Zachary Hutchins. So for our topics, Kathy will be presenting general characteristics, Christopher will be presenting distribution and phylogenetics, Pedro will be presenting conservation slash endangerment and reproduction, and Zachary will be presenting ecology. Leatherback sea turtles are a part of the domain Eukarya. All members of the Eukarya have a nucleus and are further distinguished from bacteria and archaea by a complex cellular organization. Eukaryotic cells are larger than prokaryotic cells and have a true nucleus and membrane-bound organelles. Leatherback sea turtles are also a part of the kingdom Animalia, the phylum Chordata, and the class Reptilia. Reptiles are cold-blooded animals found in most of the warmer regions of the world. Their skin is dry and rough without any glands. Their skull is monocondylic. This means that their skull has a single condyle on the occipital. And they are also oviparous. Leatherback sea turtles are also part of the order Testodines, the family Dermocelidae, the genus Dermocelis, and the species Coriacea. The leatherback sea turtle is sometimes called the lute turtle or leathery turtle. It is the largest of all living turtles and is the fourth heaviest modern reptile. It is the only living species in the genus Dermocelis and family Dermocelidae. And the phylogeny shown in the slide depicts the evolution of the modern marine turtles. So some general facts about the leatherback sea turtle is that its scientific name is Dermochides coriacea, and it's sometimes called the loop turtle or the leathery turtle. Unlike other species of sea turtles, they lack scales and a hard shell, thus giving them their name leatherback sea turtles. So some physical characteristics of the leatherback sea turtle is that they have a teardrop shaped shell or body which allows them to be extremely hydrodynamic. Their skin is embedded with osteoderms and osteoderms are bony deposits that form structures based in the dermis and in this case for leatherbacks, their signature leather shell. They have a pineal or pink spot that is studied to be a light detector and it allows them to sync with the seasons and with the weather. Also leatherbacks are the largest species of sea turtle reaching up to six feet and leatherbacks also exhibit countershading, just like other, other sea turtles, where their underside is lightly colored and their carapace is a dark colored. Leatherbacks have a lot of cool features under their belt or under their shell, if you will. So leatherbacks can swim up to 35 kilometers per hour or roughly translated to 22 miles per hour to us in the States, making them the fastest aquatic reptile. Leatherbacks are also the largest species of sea turtle. As previously mentioned before, they can reach up, up to sizes of six feet. And they also have a cool counter current exchanger, which allows them to adapt to the temperatures in the water from the rig frigid and cold waters below to the really warm and tropical waters above. Leatherback sea turtles have the widest global distribution of all reptile species, including any turtle species, and possibly any vertebrate. They can be found in the tropic and temperate waters of the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans, as well as the Mediterranean Sea. Adult leatherbacks also traverse as far north as Canada and Norway, and as far south as New Zealand and South America. Leatherback sea turtles have a circumpolar distribution. This means that at any range, these sea turtles occur over a wide range of longitudes, but only at high, high uh, latitudes. Such a range therefore extends all the way around either the North Pole or the South Pole. They nest in tropical beaches and migrate to temperate and subpolar latitudes. 
All subpopulations are genetically distinct. The East Pacific leatherback population nests along the Pacific coast of the Americas, from Mexico in the north to Ecuador in the south. The Northeast Indian Ocean subpopulation nests mostly in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, India and Sri Lanka. The Southeast Atlantic Ocean subpopulation nests extend across the Atlantic to Brazil, Uruguay, and Argentina. The Southwest Atlantic Ocean subpopulation nests only in Southern Brazil. The Southwest Indian Ocean subpopulation nests along the Indian Ocean coast of South Africa. The West Pacific Ocean subpopulation nests in Papua Barrett, Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, and the Solomon Islands. Leatherback sea turtles mate at sea, but when it comes to nesting, this is done on beaches. The male leatherback sea turtle will remain at sea its entire life. It will get close to the nesting ground so, so far as to find a mate, but it's the female that will swim ashore um, to do the work. And while the female's ashore, it's actually um, one of the most times it's susceptible to dangers of predation, of human activity, and more. And so while they're on ashore, they're looking for deep, a place to dig a deep pit where they can lay about 80 to 100 eggs, roughly. And they'll repeat this process into 8 to 10 day intervals um, in the nesting season. And so the eggs are buried a few feet under the ground, 2 to 4 feet. And they're there to incubate 55 to 60 days. And so it's in this incubation period in the middle, actually, where the sex of these turtles is determined. Temperature is the controlling factor here. Higher temperatures will lean towards turtles becoming female versus lower temperatures will actually produce males. And so once this incubation period passes, these turtles will emerge from under roughly two feet of sand. And so once they emerge, these hatchlings are completely on their own. Their mother lays the eggs in nests and leaves um, and so when these turtles come out, they're very susceptible, just as the mother is on land, uh, especially these little hatchlings because they're so small they are an easy snack or grab for predators or poachers. And so once they hatch and leave the nest, their goal is to get to the uh, bright night ocean horizon. They follow the light coming, reflecting off the ocean. So once they make it to the water, they'll follow ocean currents to reach these pelagic nursery habitats where they can uh, mature and they can safely grow. Um, it's unsure really when these um, organisms are sexually mature, but the estimate is roughly 15, 25 years. And once they reach this age of sexual maturity, they'll actually um, return back. The females will return back to the same nesting site where they hatched and nest there themselves. Leatherback sea turtles can grow up to eight feet long and weigh 2,000 pounds. Their average lifespan is currently unknown, but is estimated to be at least 30 years long. They spend almost all of their life in the ocean with only the females coming back to land. They're well suited for the ocean with their long front flippers used for fast movement as well as long distance travel. The females prefer sloped sandy beaches next to turbulent deep water for ease of access. They can dive up to depths of 4,000 feet for, for over an hour and are able to do this thanks to a flexible breastbone that can collapse under the harsh water pressure. Leatherbacks mostly eat jellyfish. They have specialized spines that point downwards towards their throat, so any jellyfish that are caught cannot escape. However, however, they are opportunistic in where they will eat crustaceans, fish, seaweed, and other small invertebrates. As juveniles, they are heavily preyed upon by many different species, including, including birds and crabs. But as adults, they are much safer but they are occasionally preyed on by what by killer whales and sharks. And nesting females in particular are sometimes preyed upon by jaguars 
in the American Tropic regions. There are many threats um, that are a danger to these animals. One of the biggest ones is light pollution, which some of you may be familiar from seeing many animal documentaries of seeing hatchlings crawl in the city or turn away from the water. And this is this happens because these hatchlings are disoriented from artificial light caused by these cities. Um, when they look to the light that reflects off the sea horizon to lead them to the waters. Uh, as human activity grows, um, there's a loss of habitat. Um, there's either a loss of nesting ground areas, period, or a loss of safe nesting ground areas um, where these turtles can't nest um, safely. The issue that's been a long time uh, just present is direct harvest of the, these turtles and their eggs. Um, the legal poaching uh, of these animals and their eggs for purposes of trophy, uh, purposes of just black market trading, and then even um, utilizing these animals as a source of protein, as meat. One that um, some aren't familiar with is fishing bycatch. Uh, there's fisheries that use large nets to catch a vast amount of shrimp and fish, and these nets are designed to catch a lot and withhold a lot under the water. So these turtles can get trapped and be harmed and even um, drown being in these nets. Uh, two of the more familiar ones would be pollution and climate change. Uh, these turtles exclusively feed um, on jellyfish, and there's many materials such as plastic um, and other harmful materials that take the appearance of a jellyfish, and such uh, leads them to consume them, which is problematic. Uh, climate change, uh, the issue here is that with higher rising temperatures, well, we talked about earlier that temperature is associated with sex determination, so higher temps means there will be more female turtles, um, which is an issue as a whole, having a disproportional amount of females versus males. Conservation efforts. There's a few uh, avenues, and as we saw in the, the previous video, we saw a little bit about education and conservation programs. Uh, education across the board internationally is huge, but really when it comes to um, these organisms, the local communities where they are around is really uh, the hot spot, because um, that will give room for education to be made for researchers to get, have a green light, just a safe um, avenue to produce their research and create conservation programs where these communities can get an active hand um, in conserving these animals. So we talked about fish and shrimp nets earlier. And one of the things that's being done to modify these um, in favor of the turtles is to create trap doors where should a turtle get trapped um, at this location farther back in the net there's a trap door that would allow the turtle to escape um, which is a small change but it goes a long way um, there are many efforts um, in costa rica um, where to protect the habitats the areas where these turtles will nest um, actually making them um, protected areas making them national parks where there's a restricted amount of access um, really from the public and then even poachers um, which this goes a long way as we mentioned before, there's light pollution. There's many things being done to control light pollution, such as just simply reducing the amount of light um, cities have at night, um, but really redirecting the light downward, either putting cones over the light um, or placing the lights lower or dimming them. That way the light is at a lower um, spot in the air and doesn't disorient these turtles. Um, a cool option you know, that I've seen is that replacing the bulbs with red light bulbs is actually one of the most effective because there is light for community goers to see, uh, but it does not disorient these turtles as, as, at all. So there's organizations that are completely committed to uh, cons the conservation of these animals, such as the Leatherback Trust. Um, and all sea turtles are endangered. And so there's really a group effort, a world effort to um, contribute to working towards the betterment of these animals, because if not, these turtles, these beautiful, majestic, large animals will be gone, um, maybe even in our lifetime.